Hi, this is Steve Barton for Solid Rock Machine Shop Incorporated. Today we're going to finish up the squareness gauge that we've been working on. Those who have been following us, uh, you know what we're talking about. Uh, we have the base unit. Uh, we have it all finished. Uh, nothing needs to be done on that yet. Uh, the nose part, where we have the radius, uh, that's going to be our pivot point. Uh, that has to be ground. Uh, we're going to grain this surface yet over here and we're going to rough dress a radius and blend that just uh, it's not important for the function but it uh, will just uh, add looks to it. Uh, we're going to grain uh, 45 degree angles uh, in a unique way on uh, these edges here so that when this puts together to seat all the way down right now uh, there's uh, a little bit of interference with the inside uh, corner radiuses that probably about five six thousandths in the edges here so we're going to have to knock a 45. First thing we're going to do though is we're going to sweep this radius and I've already worked on uh, this little arbor that I got set up in my fin uh, spin fixture and this is how we're going to sweep that radius it's all preset I'll just have to load it but basically uh, I got this ground to the same thickness as this and already got this set at the right height that it will need for sweeping that radius. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get this on there and I'm not going to tighten it down. I'm just going to uh, lightly, lightly tighten, tighten it. So it can still move yet. And then I'm going to clamp these uh, flat pieces of steel. Like so. And what that will do, uh, it will hold everything in the center real nice for me while I tighten this down. And it will keep it lined up nice and, and true uh, with the sides there. And it's been preset. And we'll be able to swing all the way around. We won't we have to worry about hitting this side. All we're going to be grinding is right there on the tip. Is barely touching right now. That was one thousandths. We're about ninety percent cleaned up. Take just a few light passes with it. Now we have a hundred percent clean up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a uh, between one and two tenths off right now. And I'm going to just feed real fine. You just barely see some sparks coming off it. You barely hear it hitting. I want to go all the way past the back side of the wheel so that I can, if there's any, any high spot on the wheel, I'll be sure to capture that. And we'll blink past back. Before you take your spin fixture off, you want to wind your table so that your spin fixture is not lined up with the wheel. Uh, if you turn the magnet, uh, when you turn it off, it demagnetizes and you slip, and that thing would raise. It could it could run right into the wheel.
Okay, so that part's done. Next part, I want to clean up this surface just to make it look nice. Again, it won't affect the function, but it will definitely make it look a lot nicer. There we go, a little bit of trouble, but now we got it. What we're going to do, we're going to have to put a little radius on the wheel for that. And let's see, and for that, we got a set of radius gauges here. We got two sets of these, one's a, uh, every ten thousandths and the other's fractionals. And it's about a 90 thousandths radius. And what we're going to do, we're going to use this uh, boron uh, dressing stick. It doesn't do a real fine dress job. It's, it's kind of coarse, but it works okay when you want to put uh, uh, rough use radius is in. Once you get the uh, roughed in a little bit, you can take a popsicle stick and you can take your radius gauge, hold it up to the light, and you can kind of measure your radius kind of rough. Works good for rough radiuses. A little bit more. Add more. There, now we got a nice looking 90. I don't know if you can uh, see in that. What I want to do is I want to relieve the back of the wheel a little bit. Above the radius. Stick, uh, boron stick, it uh, leaves a rough finish if you go real slow when you get uh, the radius where you want it. Go real slow to give you a better finish. You can see there's a little bit of chatter in there, but it looks better than the rough machine finish. 
the last thing we need to do is we need to take and we need to grind some 45 degree relieve this area so that it'll fit all the way down this surface against this back surface and this is where a v-block comes in real nice and handy uh, when you have uh, the tap toes that are in the side but basically I got a gauge block stack that uh, lines me up real nice with the center of that with the center of that uh, screw there Now we're set up. I don't know if you can see it well or not, but uh, we've got those uh, 45 degree angles breaking those edges. And now this surface should go all the way down flat on this surface. And yeah, it looks good. Uh, can't see any daylight in there. Now we get the squareness gauges finished. I've made it so it sits a little high from the bottom so it won't rub and distort our reading. What I'll be doing now is I'll be taking a Noga base. I'll be adding that in there. I can throw an indicator on there and uh, we'll be able to check the squareness of the parts. Uh, we'll do that in just a second, see how it works, but before we get there uh, if you notice, the surface of this table kind of got a dark spot right here. This is where I use it most of the time, and it's getting dirty. And if you're going to do some real high precision checking, you're going to want to make sure that this granite is nice and clean. Uh, I had a co-worker one time, uh, he worked second shift, I was working third, and he had some extremely fussy grinding that he had to uh, take uh, one night and uh, when I come in he said that he's been fighting all night and he can only get his part uh, that he's grinding uh, flat within uh, about five ten thousandths of an inch and he said he regrunned the magnet on the chuck still was struggling I told him I looked at the granite table I says clean your table and he looked at me uh, kinda like I was joking I says no that table's filthy you got a big build up on there I, uh, I said, your readings aren't consistent, are they? He says, no, they're just all over. And uh, But he didn't believe me. So I, I went and I cleaned the granite, and then he checked his part, and it was flat. So what we're going to do before we use the squareness gauge, we're going to clean this granite table off, get her nice and clean, and uh, we'll come back, and then we'll, we'll see how it works. Well, we're back. Here we have the finished... Uh, squareness checker gauge. I got it all set, preloaded. This is a block that I uh, reground probably three or four months ago, and we'll use this to check with. But basically, what's going to happen is I'll come up to this front side. I will uh, hit the block with this radius, and as I sweep it, I'll find the high point. You'll see the indicator and needle moving, and and we'll we'll rest on the high point. And if this block is square, when I turn it around and do the same thing, it should repeat uh, exactly. So, uh, Adam's trying to get at an angle so we can see the indicator reading.
and right there we're sitting on zero and this indicator has a 50 millionths resolution on it so it's extremely accurate and if I'm real careful you can come in here and you can see that we're uh, not quite 50 millionths off on the needle uh, so that's how square that is and that would be square from this point to the indicator point which measures about four and a half inches so this block is actually quite square in that area anyways this is uh, the squareness gauge we'll use that we have a friend that may be coming over tomorrow uh, he's got a, a block like this that he's wanting to square up and then we'll be putting it to actual use uh, the squareness gauge part of this is done uh, we have future plans for that and if Adam if you come over here well, let me grab something a second yeah. you come over here you can see we have the base of that unit let's see you can see the base of the unit what I plan on doing is uh, uh, taking these ejector pins. You can buy those for about 10 bucks a piece at MSC, other places. These are soft core pins. Uh, I'll be making this block, and I'll be making this block, and I'll be cutting the heads of these off, and I'll have them screwed into those parts. And then I will make a mechanism that can ride in between there that you can attach an indicator or scribing tool and so you use it for uh, a nice indicator stand and a scribing uh, tool as well with a fine adjust on it so that will be uh, one of the next things that we uh, do to this project and it'll be a multi-use tool well thanks for watching we'll see you next time